Christ became sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? Amen. So there is no law to condemn you anymore. And the Bible says in both Romans chapter 4 and Romans chapter 5, where there is no law, God will not impute sin. Lord. Amen? Amen. And so here we are. So, so, the, so the devil's been feed, defeated. Now he, Satan, is under our feet. And we are his master and we are his Lord. Yeah, right. yeah. Ephesians chapter 1. We are his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. And he gave him to be the head to the church and put all things underneath his feet. Doesn't that not say where we started off in Philippians chapter 2 that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess of all that's in heaven on earth and under the earth? Well, that would include the devil and all its cohorts, wouldn't it? Amen. And they have to bow to the name of Jesus. Jesus' lordship is ours. And he put all things under his feet, gave him to be head over all things to the church. This is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 to 23, which is his body, the fullness. There it is again. We're in the fullness of God. We're in the fullness of God. Yes. Friends, listen, you as an individual are the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You as an individual, Colossians 2, 9 and 10, are complete in Him. Hallelujah. Amen. John 1, 16, and of His fullness have you all received. And that grace for grace, last week's message, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes. Am I getting across to you? Hallelujah. Pardon my exuberance. But it's, it's the day after Christmas, and my wife is here, and my son is here, and you're here. And you don't want three points in a poem, right? You came for the word, right? right. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Revelation 19, 16, you have to turn it, just write it down. Jesus is the King of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. Question, who are the kings that he's the king over? That's us. Who are the lords that he's the Lord over? That's us. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So his kingship is our kingship. Kingship speaks of dominion, rule, authority. Lordship speaks of domain. What is our domain? The earth and the heavens. All the works of his hands. Amen. Whatever he's king over, that's what we're king over. Whatever he's Lord over, that's what we're Lord over. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The inhabitants, the Lord, the Lord. Uh, how does it say? Psalm 115, verse 16. The earth is the Lord's. How he says, the, 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 and, and all the inhabitants thereof. But the earth he has given into the hands of men. Amen. Psalm 6. I mean, we have to be returned at least to the place of Adam. In the beginning, he gave him authority over all the works of his hands. Amen? I mean, why can we speak to storms? I mean, here's an Old Testament prophet that stops the sun. Think about that. Here's an Old Testament prophet that parts the Red Sea. And they're not even born again. <laughs> Moses says to, to God in the 12th chapter of Exodus, he says, Lord, he says, uh, he says to the people, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's why you crying to me. What's in your hand? You've got the rod of authority. Folks, we got the name of Jesus. We got the name of Jesus. Jesus is still the storms. The works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. I never heard of anything so crazy in all my life. Well, I'm, just, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You know why we don't see it? Because we don't dare try it. We don't dare identify ourselves with it. Yeah, and we need to identify with the Word of God. We need to identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, just closing, okay? Why don't we see all this? Why is Satan having his way on this earth in the lives of people? And again, I said, no condemnation to anybody, all right? Nobody's a bad person. You can't be a bad person if God made you the righteousness of God in Christ. But I'm just going to tell you three things. Number one is we don't know who we are, what we have, and what we can do. We are sons of God. Masters of the devil and servants of humanity. We have eternal life. The very life and nature of Almighty God resident inside of us, ready, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, ready to be dispatched at will. We can do 
Philippians 4.13, all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can heal the sick. We can cast out devils. We can even raise the dead. That's what we are commissioned to do. Why don't we do it? Why don't we see it? Because Christians don't know who they are, what they have, what they can do. They're still trying to get God to do something that he's already done. They're still trying to get God to do something that he expects us to do. The name of Jesus is the power of attorney and the personal right and privilege of every Christian to exercise Jesus' lordship on this earth and in the heavenlies. Now I want you to just hear this scripture. I quoted it. It's Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Jesus said this. He's speaking to Peter, but Peter is only a representative of the church. And he says, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Keys always represent authority. Verse 19 of Matthew 16, he says this. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, J.B. Phillips translation says this. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. That's what the implication of binding and loosing is. The Weiss translation says this. Whatever you bind on earth will have already been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. So friends, listen, it starts on earth. God is going to back up and do what you say in accordance with his word. Amen. Amen. And heaven is going to hear and it's going to bow and obey what you say because it did it to Jesus and you're a son of God after the son of God. Amen. Now the Amplified Bible says this, whatever you declare lawful on earth will have already been declared lawful in heaven. Whatever you declare unlawful on earth will have already been declared unlawful in heaven. So we have to know what's right and what's not on this earth. And oppression, sickness, disease, poverty, death is not from God. God has ordained us and commissioned us as sons of God. What am I talking about? Rights and privileges of sonship. To do something about this earth. To do something about people's lives. We are God's policemen. And I know that it is unlawful for you, devil, to put cancer on that person. It is unlawful for you, devil, to cause that person to have a heart attack. It is unlawful for you to put that person in bondage, to cause that person to rape, to steal, to kill. It's unlawful. So I'm going to preach the gospel to that person. I'm going to cast that devil out of that person. I'm going to preach the gospel to them. They're going to get born again. They're going to get saved. Their nature is going to change, and they're going to follow Jesus. Amen. And we stay at that, and you don't take no for an answer. Amen. But if we are spending all our time trying to get our needs met, which are already met in Christ Jesus, and we're spending all our time trying to get nice cigars and nice houses and all these nice things, which, again, God's not against. But if we spend all our time with that, we're not focused on what God wants us to do, which is to advance the kingdom of God and, 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 and influence people's lives with the gospel. Amen? Amen. And so it's up to us. Now, just a couple closing scriptures. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm done. Y'all getting something out of this this morning? Yes. yes. Praise God. Rights and privileges of sonship. Jesus' lordship is our lordship. Whatever he's lord over, we're, we're lord over. Now, I know I took a few rabbit trails on a few things. So hopefully you'll bear with me and, and pardon me with that. But just, just give me a couple, couple minutes, and I'm, I'm done. Look at Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1. And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. See, we were dead in trespasses. That's not who we are anymore. We're in time past. Not now. In time past. We walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. That's who you used to be. That's not who you are anymore. Among whom also we all had our conversation or lifestyle in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and in the mind. And listen, and we're by nature. Say by nature. We were by nature children of wrath, even as others. But when we got born again, it's not our nature anymore. That's what we used to be. That's not what we are anymore. Now our nature is his nature. The nature of God. We scored this last, last week in um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. We are partakers of the divine nature. Jesus became human so that we could be a partaker of his divine nature. Verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, 